In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the particle nature of the light, how you calculate energy associated with the light, and eventually the photoelectric effect. In the previous tutorial, we had talked about the wave nature of the light, and here we solely focus on the particle nature of the light. So in electromagnetic spectrum, the radiation carries energy with them in the form of energy packets, and those energy packets are actually called photons. So those photons don't have any mass and charge on them. So if I want to calculate the energy that's carried by the photons, it's going to be equal to the H times the frequency. All right, And the H here is actually called Planck's constant. And it's going to be a constant number which you don't have to memorize it, and it's very likely that's going to be given to you. And it's actually 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. So that's going to be the value for the Planck's constant. In addition to this formula, which is the Planck's constant times the frequency, uh, you may see this formula written in the books as well, which is just the manipulation of the frequency and the wavelength. It's going to be hc over lambda. So make sure you're familiar with this equation here that's used to calculate the energy associated with a photon. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually use this equation and solve this problem right there. So it's asking us to calculate the energy associated with this red color that has the wavelength of 680 nanometers. So the wavelength here is going to be 680 nanometers. So remember, we got to get rid of the nano there because that's not the SI units. The SI units are just going to be the meters. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that prefix by multiplying with 10 to the negative 9 because that's what nano is. And then we also know the speed of light is going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And if I want to calculate the energy, so depending on what we are given, I can use that equation accordingly. So if I go back to the two equations that I have written so far for the energy calculation, uh, I know my wavelength, okay, and I also know the speed of light, and I also know the Planck's constant. So since I, I'm given the wavelength, I want to use the second part of this equation. So it's going to be energy going to be equal to hc over lambda. So h is going to be 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. And your speed of light is going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that's going to be divided by the wavelength, which is going to be 680 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Okay, I'll just go ahead and plug those in the calculator and see what that comes out to be. If you have written down all the units, you can clearly see the meters will cancel out with the meters and the seconds will cancel out with the seconds. And your answer will be in joules at the end. Okay, so after plugging those numbers in the calculators, I get 2.92 times 10 to the minus 19 joules of energy that's associated with that particular wavelength. Okay, so that's how you're going to be calculating the energy uh, when you're given the wavelength. And if you're given the frequency, then you would just go ahead and use this first formula and multiply the frequency with the Planck's constant, and that gives you the energy of the photon. Okay, so let's move on to photoelectric effect now. So photoelectric effect actually, like I said, it defines the particle nature of the light. And uh, if you shine the light on a metal surface, and if that light has enough energy, it can excite those electrons. And sometimes it can even eject those electrons from the metal surface if it has, obviously, the sufficient amount of energy. And actually, the solar panels, which kind of works on this principle called photovoltaic effect, it's closely related to the photoelectric effect. And I'll tell you what the difference between those two actually are. Let's suppose I have this metal surface. And this metal surface has a lot of electrons on it. So I'm trying to eject this, these electrons. So uh, before we actually shine the light on this metal surface, 
know some of these facts about these electrons in the metal surface. So these electrons are actually bound to the metal surface. So to actually unbound those electrons from the metal surface, you must supply enough energy so that you can break the interaction between the electron and the metal surface. And that energy is actually called a threshold energy and the binding energy. So either one of those terms are actually fine. The symbol for the threshold energy or the binding energy is going to be this little uh, phi symbol. And then if I have enough energy, it will get ejected. So let's suppose I have this light shined on this metal surface and this light is going to be carrying uh, the energy. So it's going to be E of the photon. And once it's shined on this metal surface, if it has enough energy to overcome the binding energy, it will eject this electron and this electron will move out of the metal surface. Okay, so when it moves out of this metal surface, it will move away in the form of kinetic energy. So if I want to relate the kinetic energy with the other energies here, I would say, okay, I my total energy that's coming from the light is going to be the energy of the photon. And some of that energy that's coming from the photons is going to be used to break the interactions between the electron and the metal surface, also called the binding energy. So I'll subtract that from phi here. And whatever energy that's left is going to be given to electrons in the form of kinetic energy. So that electron will move away in that case in the form of some kinetic energy. If you don't have enough energy to overcome the binding energy, then they, there is not going to be any ejection of the electrons. And uh, like I said earlier, the solar panel, which is the photovoltaic effect, they are closely related. So in a photoelectric effect, you actually eject the electron and the electrons kind of move away from the material. But in solar panels, you eject the electrons, but the electron doesn't necessarily move away from the material. It's still in the material, it just gets excited from one place to the most uh, to the next excited place. But in either case, when you're moving the electron from its ground state to an excited state or to out of the metal, you will have some voltage produced in there, and that's the f that's the foundation of producing the electricity in case of those solar panels. So make sure you are familiar with this uh, equation, which is which says the kinetic energy is going to be equal to the energy of the photon minus the binding energy. And remember, the kinetic energy is actually going to be equal to half mv squared, where m is going to be the mass, and that's going to be in the kilograms, and v is going to be the velocity. So sometimes they ask you questions like, OK, well, what's going to be the velocity of this ejected electron? And the simple answer to that is going to be first figure out what the kinetic energy is by using this top equation. And once you have the kinetic energy figured out, you can use this bottom equation to figure out what's the velocity going to be, provided you are given the mass of that electron. Okay. All right. Let's of this problem it says to determine the shortest frequency of the light required to remove an electron from a sample of an unknown metal if the binding energy is given to be 5.21 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay, so the question says you just need enough energy to remove an electron. It doesn't necessarily say that you have to actually move this away with some sort of kinetic energy. So I'm told I have the binding energy to be 5.21 times 10 to the power negative 18 joules. And then if I go back and look at uh, my equation, that's going to be the kinetic energy equals to the energy of the photon minus the binding energy. So let's go and go and write that down. So kinetic energy equals to the energy of the photon minus the binding energy. And uh, we're told we're just removing the electron and not really moving it away. So since we're not moving it away, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron is going to be zero. So then this equation becomes zero equals the energy of the photon 
minus the binding energy. So now in this case, your foot, the energy is going to be equal to the binding energy, and that's also going to be equal to 5.21 times 10 to the minus 18 in joules. So I know the energy of the photon, and once I know the energy of the photon, it should not be hard to figure out the, ener uh, the frequency. Because remember, the energy of the photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. All right, so we can set that uh, equal to 5.21 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And your frequency would be 5.21 times 10 to the minus 18 joules divided by Planck's constant, which is 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. Okay, so when I do this math, it's going to come out to be 7.87 times 10 to the 15 second inverse, which is the same as hertz. So that's going to be the frequency. Now, the question could be manipulated where they could give you a higher energy of the photon and they could ask also ask you what the kinetic energy is going to be for the ejected electron. And then from there, they could also ask you what's the velocity going to be for the ejected electron. So you can use kinetic energy equals half mv square in that particular case. All right, so hopefully this video is helpful. If you have any questions, please uh, leave the comments below.